Hey friends, today's video is going to be, actually I gotta wipe this off. <laughs> I'm not wearing any pants, but you don't know that, except I just told you. Today's video is gonna be an anti-haul because holy moly, it, oh boy, oh boy, huh. I can see a little bit better. Hi, today we're gonna do an anti-haul because there's too many things that have come out recently and I need to talk myself out of them and talk some of you out of them apparently. Apparently, there is um, tomfoolery afoot. So we're gonna start with Sephora because there aren't nearly as many things that are just on Sephora.com. Most of the things that I saw are on Trend Mood. Honestly, I feel like I need to stop following Trend Mood because it's just gotten ridiculous. If you have never seen one of my anti-hauls before, hi, welcome. Um, anti-hauls are a way to counteract the kind of buy, buy, buy all these new things mentality. And it's, it's, I'm using hyperbole. I'm kind of being over the top for the sake of being over the top because so many other people are like, oh my God, I'm, you need this thing. You don't need anything. I feel like I'm repeating myself. I feel like I say this all the time, but I just feel like I need to put like a disclaimer at the beginning of so many of these videos because a lot of people take them personally and I don't want people to take them personally. If you want to buy these things, go right ahead. It's your life. I don't care. I literally don't care. All I'm doing is kind of helping myself and helping people who, who want to see these videos and it's a little bit of fun. It's not that deep. I'm having some fun. I'm having a laugh. I'm taking the piss. I've been watching a lot of Misfits and Love Island, so. Did that sound ridiculous? I'm sorry. When I talk about these products, I'm not hating on the brand, clearly, because when I talk later about some products, you're gonna be like, Abby, like, you love this brand. I know. I talk about them so often. Um, and then sometimes I just like end up buying what I anti-hauled. So I made a video about all the things that I've anti-hauled that I ended up buying. So check that in the description. So I'm not always right. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. That's my opinion! Okay, end disclaimer. Let's get into the products, shall we? So first we're going to talk about all of these, this, this plethora, this influx of Christmas sets. It's still September, but we all know this. If, if you're a frequent makeup buyer, if you follow makeup and beauty and skincare and follow stuff like Trend Mood and Sephora and you know holiday things come out in September and October, it happens. But Every year, I just see all these holiday sets where I was like, I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. Perfume sets. I see this particular perfume set, um, Sephora Favorites Fall Perfume Travel Sampler. It's $25, so it's not necessarily the most expensive thing, but perfume samples are what you get for free in other packages. So I'm not about to buy perfume samples when I could just get them for free in other things that I buy. Like if I bought a bunch of stuff from Sephora, I could get a perfume sample for free. Like the reward system is not the best, but you can get free perfume samples. So I'm not about to buy a set of perfume samples that I would otherwise just get for free in stuff. If I'm gonna like a perfume, I'm gonna want it. Like as like a, be a bottle of it. Like I will accept perfume samples when people wanna give it to me, when brands wanna give it to me for free by all means, but if I'm gonna buy perfume, I'm gonna buy a sizable amount of perfume, not a sample. <laughs> so that's just like the first thing. There's so many other kits. Sephora favorites, give me more lip, $42. Milk makeup, MVP set. There's so many of these sets that have come out that are just ways of Sephora to charge you for samples, essentially, to get you interested in buying the full size of things. So if you, are curious about like a few things that come in a kit, like a few, a few products that you might want to try. Don't buy like a full set of things that like at least half of them you're not going to use because inevitably things get wasted. I talked about this in my video recently where I bought like a whole set of like Mac makeup. I don't use the lip products and I, I did one of my biggest faux pas. I did what I said I don't do and I made a mistake and I don't use the lip products. So don't do as I do sometimes. <laughs> do as I say. You don't need these kits of things, these sets of things that are just ways of getting Sephora 
and Ulta and all these other stores for to, to, to pull you in to buy the full sizes of things when they should just be giving you samples of things. Like you can literally go into Sephora and be like, can I try a sample of this moisturizer? Can I try a sample of this foundation? You don't have to spend money on samples. And sometimes the sets are bigger and they're not like sample sizes. But again, if you're not gonna use most of the things, why buy it in a set? Cause then you're just gonna have excess clutter, waste that you don't need and you might as well just buy the full size of the stuff that you're gonna like if you like it. So Sephora, Too Faced. Too Faced has all these stupid Christmas kits. I, I swear, Too Faced is like the biggest offender. Too Faced and NYX are by far the biggest offenders when it comes to these like Christmas holiday sets that come out that are just full of crap that are like limited edition, but they're not even special. Cause limited edition is another scam because especially for holiday stuff, people are gonna buy it because it's Christmas, but they don't have to make it good because it's limited edition and they'll buy it anyway. They don't have to make it quality because they don't have to worry about having to restock and if people are gonna like it because people are gonna buy it if it's limited edition and holiday, like it's 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 a novelty, it's a gimmick, and we don't need it. I I I I like Christmas themed. I like Christmas. I'm not against Christmas and like Christmas themed things. But I feel like so many of these brands come out with these holiday sets of just like limited edition stuff that are like really boring and not that special that like if it was any other time of the year, you wouldn't buy it. So like, why buy it just at the holidays because it's the holidays, you know? So any of these sets, these whether it's a set of samples that you could get for free or a set of random crap that they just wanna sell with Christmas packaging, I don't need it and I'm not going to buy it. I feel like I talk about Too Faced in every single video. Something that I've been seeing a lot lately, um, whether it was on like Octoly, Trend Mood, the ones I have listed here, like in my cart, just as like for reference, are the Eve Lom cleansing oil capsules. It's essentially like little individual, like pill sized things filled with skincare. And that feels like the most tedious, time consuming, gimmicky and like wasteful practice like for skincare like some of these i think are made from the same stuff that you would get in like pills that you would swallow but some of them are legit made from plastic and they're like little individual shots of skincare and it just feels really unnecessary why would we need this you're paying for that extra process to get the product like that i don't know if there's like a particular thing that makes the skincare that much more stable when they're in that individual thing which it probably does but like if the skincare has to be like individual doses in like pill form would it be unusable if it was just in like an like an airtight pump because it's like when you have it in like the the airless pumps, like air's not getting into it. So like, why not just put it in that? Why does it have to be in like little horse pills that you squeeze onto your face? It just seems really weird. And I've, I'd never seen that until like maybe six months ago. And I'm like, what? I don't, why do we need this? I don't need this. So yeah, any of these little, little, little cleansing oil and skincare capsules, they look like those little like bath beads that you had in like the 90s that were like the different colored ones and it was like pre-bath bombs and they had like different shapes that would like melt in the bath. You know, did anybody else have those? Was that a thing for everybody else? I don't know. It looks like that, but then you squeeze it onto your face. It just seems really, it seems really like Instagram makeup type product, even though it's skincare and it's just like, I don't like it and I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. The next thing, we're gonna talk about moon juice again. I haven't talked about moon juice in a while. I shit on moon juice a long time ago for various things. Their stuff is so overpriced and so like goop, Gwyneth Paltrow, fucking extra as shit, over the top. So like, let's put jade eggs in our vagina. That's what moon juice is to me. And the, the lady that started moon juice is like the most pretentious person I've ever heard in my life. Um, I'll leave a link to a video in the thing cause it's, she's ridiculous. Deeply mineralizing. And then Amanda shot tell me again. They just released this Sephora only, online only cosmic gold uh, powder and it is a combination. It looks like a combination of uh, collagen protect, which is one of their products and then spirit dust, which that sounds like 
a drug. And cosmic gold, again, sounds like a drug that you would, uh, it says that it manages stress and promotes hydration. It's a powder to create adaptogenic golden milk. And what it tastes like, turmeric. It's turmeric. <laughs> It's golden milk and golden milk is a thing that you could get at a health food store. You do not have to buy a fancy, fancy version from Sephora. Golden milk and turmeric is good for you. Not saying it's not, but this is $40 for less than five ounces of product. So the spirit dust is goji berry powder, reishi mushroom extract, ash, some root, root and leaf extract, astralaga, astragalus root extract, silk tree bark extract, long and berry extract, red rooted sage extract, stevia leaf extract, and then there's rice bran solubles, tremella mushroom powder, turmeric, coconut sugar, ginger, cinnamon, vanilla powder, cardamom, pink salt, and black pepper. It's a health food supplement that you could get at a health food store that you don't need to spend $40 on a powder at Sephora from some hippie ass lady. I don't like the idea of buying like health supplements at Sephora. I, I don't like that idea. So, but the best part, these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So that's everything from Sephora. Speaking of wacky, um, wacky beliefs about health. Kat Von D came out with a new palette. Big whoop. The Lolita Por Vida is it's it's there i mean the packaging is like prettier than the last couple of palettes that she put out but like that's some boring at like it's so boring and then there's like these three weird like shimmery shades that are like larger than the other ones that are just like art like placed oddly that's just like weirding me out like visually and it's just it's it's not it's not special regardless of how you feel about Kat Von D obviously you guys know how I feel about Kat Von D I don't support her anymore I had a couple people tag me in this on Instagram <laughs> people being like wow look how boring this is and like somebody tagged me in it and then like being sarcastic and be like don't forget this Abby and I was like oh, I'll be anti hauling it and then Kat Von D like liked the girl's comment <laughs> on the post and I was like oh Kat if only you knew <laughs> This looks like the last three ColourPop things that have come out. So if you want something that looks like this, just buy the ColourPop one because you could get it for less than half the price and you're not supporting an anti-vaxxer. Ha <laughs> ha! It's irrelevant. Sorry, Kat, you're irrelevant. Speaking of ColourPop, um, there have been so many palettes. Like, besides all of the nine pans that ColourPop farted out all at once. They came out with the whatever palette and then there was like the X's and O's palette. Truly Madly Deeply, there's like three different palettes that look almost identical and I can't keep track of it all. ColourPop, I get that you want to make money and I get it, but the palettes are getting so redundant. I can't keep up. People are getting fatigued. People are getting bored. People are getting overwhelmed that nobody knows what's new, what isn't just like everything else they already have. And I feel like eventually ColourPop is gonna burn out and people are going to burn out on ColourPop if they're not already doing so. Like they're objectively pretty. So like if you don't have something like this, support this rather than Kat Von D for sure. But especially probably the one that annoyed me the most was this So Jaded palette that has 30 shades that was a collaboration with Ka Kathleen Lights. I don't really care about Kathleen Lights either way. The palette, please ColourPop, don't turn into Morphe. Please don't. It's $35, which isn't the worst. It's actually pretty affordable for what you're getting, but, but it's such an overwhelming looking palette. It's so large. It's like kind of organized weirdly. It, it looks like a Morphe palette and I don't want ColourPop to turn into Morphe because I, I can't even tell the difference between most Morphe palettes these days. And this was just so big and so overwhelming. And so just like, why, why do I want this? I don't want this ColourPop. It's just a mixture of things. Like it's some jewel tones and then some neutrals and then like some pressed glitters and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't need this. I mean, like it's nice that it's permanent and it's not like limited edition. Thank you ColourPop for not releasing everything limited edition because I feel like that's the bane of everybody's existence because people will put out so many things. Brands will put out so many products so quickly in between them and they'll make it limited edition and people are like, oh, I need to get this one. I need to get this 
one too. It's making people overbuy because there's this like exclusivity to it. And I, I'm, I'm kind of sick of limited edition things just in general. I've managed to get my hands on a few limited edition things in my, in my time, but I don't care anymore. If it's not good enough for you to keep it around for ever, then I don't want it. I don't know. Like, I don't like the idea. Limited edition is just a gimmick and I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. Okay. Speaking of Morphe, Morphe, Wet and Wild, everybody's just a mess. This palette, this 3503, this is the derpiest palette I've ever seen. So it's essentially the 350 and the 3502, but with two greens in it. Kelly green and a light minty green. I, I have nothing to say. Like looking at the swatches, I'm just like, like you'll look through, oh, warm, neutrals, blah, blah, blah. And then there's just like a green just randomly thrown in there. What do you expect me to do with that? Morphe, what do you expect me to do with these two random ass greens in this huge palette full of warm neutrals? Like not even any like cool neutrals. Like why, why? We, no. I don't shop for Morphe in general, so like I wouldn't buy it anyway, but like if you do shop for Morphe, why you don't need this. <laughs> if you have the 350 or the 3502, you don't need the 3503. Just the sheer fact that it's 35 is too much for me. I get overwhelmed by anything over 20. And so these giant 35 color palettes are never anything that I wanna buy and never anything that I need because I get overwhelmed just like by the sheer number of colors because if it's one that's cohesive, there's naturally going to be like repeat shades. And if it's not cohesive, it's like, what do I do with this? You know, like there's just too many things that it's either gonna be totally disjointed or totally repetitive, so. I don't like big palettes. I don't like big palettes and I've made that clear. The next thing we're gonna talk about is another huge palette from Wet n Wild. Why Wet n Wild? What are you doing? It, while I don't care about James Charles, like I don't like James Charles. I've talked about him in the past. I don't support James Charles, but this was just dumb. It was just dumb and it was petty of Wet n Wild to come out with a palette that's virtually the same. Like he was full of himself by thinking that he was the first person to come up with a palette that was gonna be like, across the board, useful for artists and for beginners, and that you can do any look with it. You're not revolutionary, James Charles. Stop kidding yourself. But it was just really lame of Wet n Wild to do this. I was baffled by this. Yeah, and it's limited edition. Again, stop with the limited edition. No, I don't need anything that's limited edition right now. Sorry, don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it, good Lord. One thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit, I don't wanna talk about too much because I don't want people to like come for me. This line that Millie Bobby Brown put out uh, called Florence by Mills. She is 15, she's a child. And I am generally weirded out by the idea of young teenagers like having beauty brands. Like this is a, a pretty minimalist type brand, but maybe it's just like times are different and like teenagers like wear a lot more makeup than I did when I was young, but I don't, I don't like necessarily the idea of a 15 year old releasing a beauty brand. Is that just me? Am I just old? I don't know, like it's cool that it, that part of its proceeds go to the Olivia Hope Foundation and that it's cruelty free and vegan, which is cool. But like, it's just not my vibe. And I, I mean, I'm clearly not the audience because I'm a, not a young person and this isn't kind of like the general makeup that I wear. I don't know how I feel about having a child branded makeup brand. You know, it weirds me out. Um, one thing that I am telling myself right now, I might break this rule. I might, I might go against my own word. This new Fenty Diamond Bomb. Um, Fenty's come out with, with a bunch of stuff for fall and for holiday and there's like a lip gloss kit where I'm like, eh, whatever. And there's like the liquid diamond bomb, which again, I don't really like using like liquidy shimmery things, like whatever, again, too expensive. But there's like a new diamond bomb that's like a peachy pink sparkle and I'm just like, oh my God, like, oh boy, oh no, I want it so bad. I want it, I want it. Like I loved the first diamond bomb, but like the fact that this one's gonna be like a peachy pink one, I'm like, oh. I need to see it in the store. And this is limited edition too. So I'm just gonna be, yeah, I don't know. I loved the first diamond bomb. I loved the formula. I thought it looked really pretty, but oh, Rihanna, 
You're testing me. You're testing me, Fenty. That and like the Urban Decay came out with like more of those like dusting body powders. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like the ones that they used to have when I was like a teenager. And they were like the lickable body powders. I don't know if these ones are lickable, but I saw those and I was like, oh, I would get one of those. I would ask for those for Christmas because that's adorable. And I just, the nostalgia, I love it. Anybody see me posting things on socials about this highlighter? Stop me, like, please. <laughs> because I don't need it, but I want it. <sighs> oh boy. I think the last thing we're gonna talk about is probably what you guys most have been wondering about um, and probably what you've been uh, most, uh, what you've been thinking about the most. Anastasia. My love, my light, I love Anastasia. The brand is my favorite brand. Like I will, I will say that Anastasia is my favorite brand from the formula, from the, the aesthetics, from the quality, everything about Anastasia for the most part, I've been here for. I talked about the Norvina volume one in my last anti haul last month. And I did not think I would be talking about this, the volume two and the volume three in my next anti haul. I did not think I'd be talking about this today because that's insane. That's so that's color pop speed. Okay. And I know that these palettes have come out as like a pro kind of palette, like a pro version. I mean, it seems to be visually their kind of answer to Natasha Denona stuff. So when it comes to that, like it's a far better value than what you're going to get. If you buy Natasha Denona, that's obvious because it's like 60 bucks versus $129 and you're getting more colors. But like the, the time between releases is so small that to me, it would have made more sense and it would have made me happier with them personally if they had released all of them at one time. The Norvina one, two, and three all at once. That way people could pick which one they wanted if they wanted any rather than releasing one and people being shook buying it. Releasing two, people being shook buying that one and less than a week later, releasing the third one. Now, I re reorganized all of the palettes. I, I will put them up on the screen right now. I was busy, I was bored at work one day and I went into Photoshop and I took all of the swatches. I rearranged all the palettes and I wanted to see mainly just for my own like, organizational skills because I prefer palettes that are a bit more organized like these ones. The the volume one, volume two, volume two seemed a little bit more organized. Volume three was a bit scattered, but like I could see the color story a little bit better, but I just wanted to see like what the colors were in a, in a way that like pleased my eyes a little bit better. And I've actually had a lot of people respond really well on Twitter. Cause people are like, wow, this actually like makes me either not want to buy the ones that I was thinking about or buy the ones I was. So do with that what you will. And I, uh, I did post them on Twitter. So if you want to see them longer, bigger, they're there to me, to me, volume one. And I talked about volume one in my last one. Cause I was just like, it was, came out so quickly after Jackie's palette. Volume one is a lot of shades that I already have. So I'm not feeling volume one for myself, but I'm also not a pro. So if I was a makeup artist, this would be different. If I was doing makeup on other people for money, it would be different. It also is 25 shades. So for me personally, it's a bit overwhelming as far as like number of shades. Um, volume two, too many blues for my taste because I don't use a lot of blue eyeshadow. So that one, not necessarily my thing. Volume three, however, once I reorganized it in my own kind of way, I wish they were magnetic pans and you could just reorganize them as you wanted, but volume three does have a color story that I relate to more because it is more of those warm tones, which I know I wear a lot of. Um, and it has some greens, not too many greens. Um, I don't know how the greens would look, how they would differ on the eyes because there are a lot of shades that look really similar in the palette. And until I see them in the stores, I'm not gonna know exactly how similar these shades are. And I know that once you see them in a store, it's a little bit easier to tell and it doesn't look exactly the same as the pictures. The packaging on the third one is gorgeous and I love the branding of it. I love the, the butterfly aspect and the color story for me, I relate to the best. I'm just particularly off put a bit 
by the fact that they released them so soon together without just like making them one release together. Having them all come out at the same time would have been, I feel like a, a huge thing because people don't do that anymore. People don't come out with so many palettes all at once. If they would have had three pro palettes that came out at the same time, that would have been, that would have been, changed the game. That would have been, people would have been shook. But now the fact that they released three different palettes so close together, but still as different releases without people knowing that there were going to be more palettes coming. And I know that like brands can't be blamed for like what consumers do, but it's like, if you're gonna like hype up this thing so much and, and make it so, like they do a great job with branding and marketing. Like that's part of why I love Anastasia because they are so good with their branding. Like it's it's usually very streamlined. It doesn't go like off book and off the rails like Too Faced or Benefit. And so because they're so good at it, people are more inclined to jump at the opportunity because they don't know it's going if it's going to be limited edition. For me, I don't know if they're gonna come out with another one. Who knows? Who knows if they're gonna come out with another one? There might be another one by the time this video goes up. Who knows? But my advice to anybody who is grappling with if they want any of these, don't just buy all three because you need to have all three of them because these are more expensive than the regular Anastasia palettes. This is a good $18 more. So, I say, look at them all, see them all, swatch them all, really get an idea of what you like. And if you want to invest in one, by all means, invest in one. Do what you wanna do, by all means, buy all three of them. But don't feel like you need to because that's what all the like all the influencers are gonna be doing. They're gonna be talking about these. I know they're gonna be talking about these. They already are. When I saw the first one, I was like, uh, when I saw the second one, I was like, uh, and then when I saw the third one, I was like, okay. So I might buy the third one. I don't know. The packaging is the most, is the prettiest out of all the three that I like, but until I see it in person and until I think on it for a bit and I look into my collection and I'm like, ah, that's kind of open-ended, but that's kind of how I feel about it, generally. Like, after reorganizing them, I, I I look at volume one as like some like more of a pinky tones. I see volume two as more of a rainbowy palette and volume three is like more of a fall palette, like a fall brights palette. Yeah, take a look at the images. Um, if you wanna reorganize them yourself, you can take it in Photoshop, it's pretty easy. Yeah, so that's, that's my thoughts on the Norvina palettes. I'm not nearly as salty as I usually am, but I know that I love the formula and I love Anastasia products. So, and I don't doubt that they're going to be good. Um, it's just the speed and the, the, the rest that people did not get in between releases that is throwing me off. Do what you wanna do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what you don't need to do, you know? So yeah, that's today's anti-haul. There was a lot. I talked about a lot today. Jesus Christ, it's gonna be really long. I like filled up a memory card. <laughs> Damn it. Um, today's song of the day. Let's see, what have I been listening to? <laughs> song of the day is Lie to Me by Dark Smith and they are a local band. Um, it's very like 90s kind of grungy stuff. It's it's what you would picture a band called Dark Smith to sound like, but they're super cool. They have a record that they came out with this year called Degressive, but Lie to Me um, was from a single in 2017, which is one of my favorites of their songs. So check out Dark Smith. They're pretty cool. They're local. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a weird anti-haul, but thanks to my patrons for always being patient. We've had a good time on some of our streams lately, so y'all are fun. Uh, if you guys want to check out my Patreon, we have a private Discord and we do some private streams and we have generally fun times on it. I got drunk and made some playlists the other day, so and I regretted it the next morning because I drank too much, so sometimes it just happens, you know? Yeah. Okay. Again, I don't take these anti-hauls personally, please. This is all about my own feelings and it's all about kind of counteracting the push for people to buy all the new releases. 
um, because you don't need all the new releases because there's too many. And if you did need all of them, if you did buy all of them, oh boy, the amount of clutter. <laughs> if I bought everything that was new, holy shit, my sister would murder me. It would not be a fun time in this house. Thanks everybody. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you.